Well, hello there. And how are you doing today? <laughs> oh, I am so delighted to hear that. And me? Well, I'm not doing bad at all. Thank you for asking. It is getting cold outside, though. It's wintry outside. It's raining. It's cold. It's miserable. So, it's the time of year when you need to have some indoor pursuits. Don't you agree? <laughs> of course. Now, what have I been up to this week, you may be asking. Very good question. Well, as you know, Flight 1 was breaking down all the time. So, I got out the plastic, the credit card that is, and went off to Amazon and all other places that I could find on the internet to get me some bargains. And I did. I managed to order a new motherboard, new processor, new memory, because of course it needs to be matched to the board, and of course the uh, processor fan itself. Those are the four new things that I've got. I started out with the original computer case. I took out the old Flight 1 motherboard and all of the stuff that was in it and started from a bare case with nothing in it, just the standoffs to hold the motherboard. I was then ready to put the new motherboard in. Now here's the case. As you can see, it's a tall, full tower case. This particular case is made by Fantex. And it's very robust. Lots of fans in this. And in the front, it comes with these four USB connections in a lid that you lift up at the front. So into the case went my new motherboard, and this is the motherboard. This is the Republic of Gamers Strix X299-E Gaming 2. So this is a gaming board. I know, I know, I know. I'm not a gamer, but it is a powerful board and should handle all of the graphics that's required in it. You can see here that the, there are four slots on the left and four slots on the right for all kinds of memory. And there are three slots on the board for graphic cards. And you'll notice that they are wider apart than normal ATX boards have been. Because the graphic cards that are coming out today, those RTX boards, those are all extra wide and so it's needed for space. It comes with two power supplies that need to be added to the CPU. And then, of course, the main motherboard connection, the 24 pin, is over on the side. What was interesting about this is that to the side of the RAM slots, you can see that there are two particular slots here that I want to tell you about. The top one. That is for an M2 chip. And I'm going to be running M2s in this motherboard. No SATAs at all. Just below that is a motherboard socket for a C-type USB connection. The Thunderbolt. And then I started to connect up some of the other small stuff. For instance, the case needs to be connected to the motherboard for the power switch, the reset switch, things like that. And Asus gives a little gizmo like that to be able to plug things into to make it very simple then to just simply plug all of them directly onto the motherboard. That blue thing in my palm that I'm 
just shoving off to the side there, those are for additional USB 3.0 sockets on the front panel, which I added. Down on the bottom, I connected a four port USB 2 to the motherboard itself. That, those are the two places where they plug in and that is where they fit on the slot at the back. Here you can see I have four uh, sockets for all of the many USB devices that I have to hook up in the flight simulator. Next I'm going to have to fit in the processor. It's an Intel Core i9 processor. It's the 10920X. This particular model has 12 cores on the inside, so I'm hoping it will provide all the processing power needed to run the simulator without any hiccups. First thing you need to do is you need to find the little gold triangle that's at the edge of the processor. Then on the motherboard, you have to find a matching triangle. And there's a couple of places where it's located. This is one and the other one, which is actually on the secure plate. And the reason for it being exactly matched is because of all of these pins. Those are actually pins that stick up. I don't know if you can see them well enough, but if you have the processor in the wrong direction, well then it just won't work. All of those pins have to match up with the base plates of the processor and this is the underside of the processor. I mean, that is quite a bit of architecture, isn't it? My goodness me. So there it is. <clears throat> there's the triangle. And there's the other one over here. Just make it out, I think. But now the processor is in, so now we need to close up. And then lock this side first. Just like that. And then lock this side afterwards. Just like that. So now the processor is in place. Well, now that the processor has been installed, we take this little hypodermic looking thing, which is filled with heat transferring paste. It's a sort of a grease. And it will transfer the heat from the processor to the cooling fan on the processor. So we go and squirt it on top of the processor like this, making sure that the stuff is spread around as much as we can. And then on top of that, and there are four places that we have to screw it into, then we're going to add this processor, which has a delightful fan system and a good cooling system to make sure everything runs cool. And here it is in place. Here's the processor. You can see the screws at the back that's holding it in location. There's one of them right there. So now it's all in place. 
And here are the memory slots. Each one is 16, so that's a total of 32 gigabytes of RAM. Well now, it's time to add an M2 slot, right there. And here is drive C, 500 gigabytes, M2. And then over here is drive D and drive E. All of the software will be distributed between all three to make this a lot more efficient. Right, now to put the covers back on. And here's the front panel. Some extra USBs here that were part of the case. I added this to give myself some extra 3.0 USB connections. And this is the one that goes into that type C extension on the motherboard. So plenty of extra USBs available here. And here on the back, these are some additional USBs, these are standard 2.0, and I have the keyboard and mouse transmitter receiver right here. And then this is the 2.5 gigabyte LAN, and the standard one gig is underneath it. So that would be LAN 2 and LAN 1, 3.0s, and here are the super speed USBs here is the type C which will really give me quite a boost and then of course down at the bottom are the additional four USB connections I'm gonna have an awful lot of things to plug in so having plenty of USBs is important Well, it's all put together. There's the power supply. These are the extra USBs. The two GeForce RTX 360s with 12 gigabytes each. <laughs> Hopefully there'll be enough. All the wiring is nice and tidy down below and power has been added to each of the graphic cards there's the ram on each side there's the processor fan here's the only m2 which is exposed that's this one Plenty of fans for cooling. This is, after all, an i9 processor. So, I suppose I have to plug it in and see if it will work. Ah! Right! I've got a simple little HD 1080 monitor here plugged in and I have my Windows operating system right here and the LAN is plugged in right there. I'm using headphones for the sound since this monitor doesn't have sound. Right, now then, 
let's see if this will fire up or cause a fire. <laughs> Now it's the moment of truth. Are you ready? Place your bets. Place your bets. Last chance to place your bets. Will it or will it not work? Will it fire up or simply cause a fire? <laughs> Anybody want to bet on that? Right. All right. All bets closed. Bets closed. Now let's power it on and see whether or not this lights up. So let's see, power, ah, I have some light and there we are, we're getting F1 to run setup. So. We can now enter into the BIOS. So, all of you who said it wouldn't work, pay up. <laughs> right, now I'm going to go into the BIOS, get everything organized, then start it up into the operating system and load it up. Well, that was yesterday. And the doorbell going right in the middle of my dramatic moment. <laughs> well... You can't plan for these things, you just have to take them as they come, eh? Since then, I've been installing the operating system and everything is running smoothly. I'm running those three M2 chip drives. One is the 500 gigabyte, that's drive C, and the other two are one terabyte each. And they're all working just smoothly, it's quite fast. I'm actually quite impressed. I know it's a gaming computer and I'm not a gamer, but it does have all of the features on the motherboard that will run the simulator, I think, as well as it can. So that's where we are today. And this is the third update. I'm going to be busy getting the P3D installed, Active Sky installed, a few, not all, but a few of the sceneries that I'm going to need. And then plug it in, plug in all those USBs, and then organize all of the monitors. And I've got a lot of other things to do to get the USB devices, the radios and the yokes and everything else, all have to be calibrated once again. So it's a big job. But I just wanted to let you know where I was at this particular point. I'm having such a lot of fun. I hope you are too. So I will see you at the next update. All right. Bye.